Hello, so I've got this uh, new RX6700, this is the non-XT model, it's uh, 10 gigabytes, so it's like a 6700 XT but cut down slightly, uh, the uh, memory bus is cut down and I think it's got a few less cores as well, you can see it hasn't got a back plate, give you a quick look over the PCB here, this is a power colour fighter version. It's interesting it's got uh, two different mounting holes for heat sinks there. There are a few components that aren't used on the board here. Okay, so you can see this one is a 8 and 6 pin. And I think this cooler's got five heat pipes. So there's two there, and then three on this side here. So two of them end there, and the other two end over here. Might only have three heat pipes actually. I wonder if these two go all the way around to the other side and uh, go through the heat sink in sort of an S shape. I'm not sure on that. Uh, but there you go. So this is quite a small card. It's not uh, tiny, but it's not big by any means. But you can see it from pretty much every angle there. It doesn't have any kind of overhang. The PCB is the same length as the heatsink. So, and it is a two slot card as well. So you can see there, no overhang. On the uh, rear I.O. here, Got three display ports and one HDMI. So here's a quick size comparison for you. This is obviously the 6700. This is a RX 6800. This isn't the XT version, this is just the standard one. And then at the top here, we've got a RX 580 Nitro Plus Special Edition. So you can see how big it is there. So you can see it's quite short, but also quite narrow. So there you go, you can clearly see the power colour is the narrowest of the three cards. Sapphire is the thickest, just over two slots. And then height wise, you can see there. Alright, so next let's get it on the scales and see how much it weighs because everyone loves that. And let's just plunk the card on there. Alright, it's only 557 grams so I thought it was pretty light. So that's the 6700. So we'll just quickly compare that to the 580 Nitro Plus. So that's almost double. That's almost a kilogram. And then the 6800, the reference one, is nearly 1.4 kilograms, just over 1.4 kilograms in fact. So, yeah, you can uh, kind of tell how much more material there is in the heat sinks. Uh, this PCB is incredibly light, also doesn't have a back plate, so that'll save a bit of weight as well. You know, we all know that lighter cards go faster. Oh no wait, they don't, heavier cards go faster, never mind. So we've got the card in the system. The system is a 10980XE on air cooling on the Asus Rampage 6 Apex. We have uh, 32 gigabytes of Viper Steel memory, Patriot Viper Steel, and obviously the 6700's GPU. So let's turn it on, get the drivers installed and take it for a spin. So let's take a quick look at the card in uh, GPU Z. It's currently um, sitting in zero fan mode so if you can hear any fan noise in the background that's probably the uh, 5700 XT's which are mining. So this card's got uh, Samsung GDDR6, 10 gigs obviously. So it's 2,304 um, stream processors on this card. 
and the uh, bus is 160 uh, bits. I believe the 6700 is 192, so we cut down a few percent there, and the uh, same on the cores as well. Uh, the GPU clock speed is uh, 23 to 2500, and the memory is sitting at 2000. And uh, you can see it is zero RPM on the fan, and it's currently sitting at about 50 degrees. If I just touch the uh, heat pipes on it, is quite warm so sounds about right uh, you can see the GPU voltage is pretty low go across to the uh, AMD software here which the camera doesn't really like because it's quite dark um, I've already installed the driver this is 22.6.1 uh, which is the latest one for this card on AMD's website so let's check out the power limit first that goes up to 15%. Fan tuning should be the same as before. Uh, no rebar, because this is a uh, 10980XE. So obviously I don't have SAM or rebar on this. Let's check the uh, frequency. Right, so we can go up to 2800. So we could go 2700, 2800. Uh, 1.2 volts, that's pretty nice to see. We're allowed the full uh, voltage, so in more power tool we should be able to get up to 1.25 in that case uh, if we can't hit this 2800 at stock. And then memory, let's have a look, 2150 I'm guessing, yep, 2150 on the memory. So I'm going to discard changes and just run it stock to start with. And just one more thing before I start here. You can see the uh, power limit at stock on this power colour card is 158 watts. Uh, I'm going to leave uh, GPU-Z open over here for while I'm running the benchmark. Okay, so we've just done one run of uh, Time Spy here. You can see it's got a graphics score of around 10,000. The CPU is only scoring 15k. Uh, the 10980X is not really set up to run. Uh, normal time spy at the minute set up to run time spy extreme so hyper threading's on uh, but anyway that's pretty decent it was scoring I think over 60 fps in GT1 and down to about 40 in GT2 so pretty decent start anyway you can see it only hit 2350 on the core uh, 2400 on the memory or 2400 although I think that sounds incorrect because it should be at 2000. Um, in the benchmark, it's in 2200. So that, that number there is completely wrong. Um, the temperature only 65 degrees, 81 on the hotspot. Fans got up to 52% or 2000 RPM. Again, I can't hear them in here because it's got like 5. 5700 XTs next to it pumping out like 750 watts uh, you can see here the uh, GPU power draw 159 watts so that's right on the top of the power limit it is hitting the power limit constantly and you can see it's uh, not using anywhere near as much voltage as it could do uh, CPU is not melting but uh, it's not really that hot actually Probably be better if I did this with the uh, 12900K, but never mind. Alright, this is hilarious. Not only is the card not on hardware bot yet, uh, but 3D Mark doesn't know what it is either. So, uh, just so 3D Mark know, it's a RX 6700 non XT. So, there we go, that is pretty funny. Right, so what I did on this run is I've whacked the power limit up. 15% which is the most you can do it and the fan speed to 101% as you can see there the memory again is lying that's still at stock um, although it says it got to 2500 but I don't think it will have been running at that in the benchmark uh, we're still running around 23 2400 and you can see it can now use 183 watts at the full power limit so that's pretty good and the temperature is still 
uh, stayed the same, but it was actually uh, 58 degrees maximum by the looks of it, but I forgot to reset this. So next time before I do the benchmark I'll reset it, but the temperature obviously went down because the fans are on 100% now. And you can see we gained about 400 points from last time, so we're up to just over 11,000 now. So these are the settings for last time, 100% fans and 15% power limit. So next I'm going to start um, doing the core. I'm not going to undervolt it until I've seen how high the uh, core frequency can go. Right, so as you can see there, even though we've overclocked the core, that's netted as absolutely nothing score-wise or FPS-wise, which is a bit of a fail. Uh, all we've done is manage to use even more power out of the power limit, which means, yeah, we're power limited basically. So that's nice. So what we need to do is we need to undervolt the card to enable it to go to a higher clock speed. So that 1.2 volt limit that we have is uh, completely useless without using more power at all. And you can see on this run it only hit 56 degrees with the uh, fans only 95% now somehow. So as you can see this time we've gained 200 points or well more like 140. Um, and this is with the voltage lowered down to 1.15 and again forgot to reset it but you'll see in um, what man I've lowered the voltage down so it's under vaulted a little bit to 1150 I'm going to go down to 1125 for the next run I also uh, before when I had the voltage at 1200 I had this set to 2700 and that set to 2500 but it wasn't even reaching 2500 so I've lowered the minimum to 2400 now and uh, if I just make this I've reset it never mind but basically it's able to hit 2400 now um, another thing I forgot to mention earlier about the uh, card is that when I was running it at stock uh, even though it has the 0% fan speed the fans came on almost straight away as soon as I started the benchmark so it's not like these uh, bigger heavier cards where uh, you can do like half the benchmark before the fans even start spinning so they pretty much start up straight away as soon as it hits 3D clocks and that's just what you get with these smaller lighter coolers another thing as well is uh, system info on 3D mark hasn't been updated since the 19th of May so AMD put so little effort into launching this new GPU that none of these sites like Hardwarebot or 3D Mark are prepared. And as you can see, I am running 5.50, 5.50, so I am on the latest one. Okay, so we have gained about 60 points, I think, there, uh, lowering it another 25 millivolts. Let's look at the uh, core frequency. Okay, so it's getting a bit flatter now. It's around 24 to 2500. So that is a little bit better than before. Still only at 55 degrees, and I assume it's still hitting the power limit most of the time. But it is getting a little bit lower now. So we'll try 1100 millivolts and see if we can get any more out of it. So we've managed to get another 70 points out of it, so we're at 11.336 now. And uh, the clocks are starting to creep up a bit more. So it is hitting almost 2600 by the looks of it in some parts. Mm, not quite. So yeah, it's, it's going pretty well. So I'll try lowering the voltage a little bit more, but I don't know how much less it will go now. I am starting to slow down a bit now um, in the lowering of the voltage, so I only went down to 1090 I think on that run. Yeah, so only 1090 from 1100. So it's only gone up like 10 points or so, but it's still going up. So we're going to keep lowering the voltage until it crashes basically. 
see how low it can go. So we're now at 1060 megahertz on the undervolt, if I just get that up. Yeah, 1060 and it's still working perfectly fine at these settings somehow. And uh, you can see the graphics score still going up very slightly. So we're just going to keep going. Right, so we're at 1050 millivolts. The score has stopped scaling completely. So what I'm going to do is, I'm actually going to go back to 1070 and I'm going to raise the base to 2500 and we'll see what happens, see if it scores any more. Yeah, so even with the undervolt we're not gaining anything else from the core frequency whatsoever. Uh, we've actually lost 20 points on that run. So. Let's try uh, overclocking the memory next and see how this goes. Got the first score over 12,000 points and we're at 11,600 on the graphics now. So uh, these are the settings I'm using. So I've got the fast timings on and 2120 on the memory. I'm just going to do a one last run um, at these settings. So we've got minimum 2400, maximum 2700. Obviously, 15% power limit, uh, 1060 millivolts, and 2120. Going to do one last run at 2150, uh, see if that scores any higher. It has been scoring more as I've moved the memory slider up uh, with the fast timings on, so that's good. So, we'll see if it scales for the last one. That'll be pretty much all she's got, I think. So, there we go, that's completely maxed out now, 11626. So let's look at these core speeds, uh, around 25 to 2600 ish, and uh, they're the settings I've used. We did get 2150 working perfectly fine, and 1060 millivolts on the core. Not bad. So now it just needs more power. This time we're running Fire Strike, and uh, hopefully we'll get some more megahertz out of it in Time Spy. We were power limited all the time. In Fire Strike, you can see we've got some dips here, so it's not hitting the power limit all the time. So hopefully we'll be able to get a bit more core frequency out of it. And uh, we just run the same settings that we ran Time Spy at. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump the minimum speed up to 2500. And run again, see if it scores any higher. So I bumped the minimum frequency on the core up 100 megahertz, and as you can see we got an extra 1000 points in Fire Strike. We are as power limited as we were in Time Spy. So I'm going to bump it up another 100 megahertz to 2600. So there we go, that's everything on the sliders maxed out and you can see the score hasn't really changed much. That's with it, 2700 and 2800 down there. And you can see during the benchmark, it is hitting 2700. But I think what might be happening is, it might be doing a little bit of clock stretching. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to raise the voltage up uh, 10 at a time and see if that gets any higher of a score. Right, so that has lowered the graphics score a little bit. So it wasn't clock stretching, it's pretty much it. That's all we can get out of it on the stock power limit. So. That'll be it for this video. Goodbye. So I thought I'd try 3D Mark Port Royal for a laugh, and it's uh, only got 5,400. So it's to be expected on a little card like this, though. But it's pretty funny that it can actually run it. Got like 25 FPS or something, and uh, that was the same settings as Fire Strike. I haven't bothered uh, tweaking it back to what it was in uh, Time Spy. So there we go.